What's up? Uh, not that much. How about Any, you? Anything exciting happened this week? Any cool things? Any exciting stuff? I'm being very descriptive here. Mm, very broad. Yes. I, I, I did more of my taxes. Whoa. Ooh. I yeah. looked at my taxes and decided, nah, not right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm unfortunately, I was trying to get it over with, but I'm going to have to wait because some of my forms still haven't come. And I have a feeling that some of them are not going to come for a little while, despite the fact that they're legally supposed to send them by January 31st. But mm, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely got all mine a while ago. I just am lazy. Well, you have until, you know, mid-April, so it's not like you have to do it right away. It's true. And it usually takes me like, it still takes me like an hour, but I don't like spending that hour of on course. doing taxes. Of course. Yeah. But uh, tomorrow, Shelby and I are going out to dinner for a nice dinner. Oh. Yeah. So that'd be nice because uh, we got like a $50 gift card for like six restaurants, five of which are in the middle of Michigan. So, but one of which is also in Toledo. So. Oh, cool. What is it? The like Longhorn Steakhouse. Oh or, yeah. Yeah. I like Longhorn. Yeah. All the other ones were like Michigan restaurants and we were, we were like, I guess we know which one we're going to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm always up for a good steak. So, you but know, it's, it's always good to have. Good, yeah free money yeah free meals for the yeah. win yeah would i have rather possibly have gotten just a 50 dollar bill maybe? maybe but i am very disappointed because it does force us to have a nice meal so oh yeah that's true uh and not feel guilty about it yeah uh yeah i'm disappointed because uh, you know, as I said, I started doing my taxes and I was doing it in stages as I got things. Yeah. And on, Turbo ta on TurboTax, it has at the top, like your estimated tax mm -hmm. liability or, ta or refund or whatever. Right. And so I put everything in except for one d in terms of, well, yeah, pretty much everything um, except for a W-2 from that job your dad had this year that was not contracting. And, uh... And I was like, oh, this will be, f it was like, oh, you're getting a $3,000 refund. I was like, yes. <laughs> and, it, and I was like, this will not be a problem because this is just a W-2. So all the taxes are taken out. And whereas, you know, he's a consultant now and you have to estimate your taxes and that can go the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I put the W-2 in and it wiped out our refund. Completely wiped it out. I have no idea what the heck they were doing at that job. But they only took three percent taxes out of his, Jeez. out of his uh, his check. So, yeah. So that was that was. I mean, the the result is the same. Like, it's true. You know but, what I mean? Like, oh, it's all in the wash. But, but like, it, I was it so takes excited. You, it takes you off guard. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I was excited because I was like, oh, either we can like pay down some more debt or we can take care of one of these different things that we're saving money for or like you know what i mean yeah and, i'd and, always rather mm. pay more taxes and then have an actual tax return huh i like that because it's like a nice surprise and a lump sum but the other thing is like then the government basically gets to invest that money and earn interest on it and you well you know you're not for that whole year but i mean i guess in most cases, it would just sit in your checking account anyway. I mean, the government has the most <laughs> debt of any of us, so. That's fair. Oh, I just read something about how it's is, going down. Is Longhorn another, like, it, like I? it doesn't seem like it's a fancy restaurant, but is it a fancy restaurant? No. I no, didn't think so. No. Okay. I just, don't do fancy restaurants. <laughs> no. I'm, like, well, I'm not going to get dressed up to go out to eat. I'm sorry. I'm just not. But. They don't really do that anymore, though. Like, well, I mean, I imagine there are go, some restaurants that it's people like, who go, yeah, will do it. And there probably are some, but most restaurants don't like force you to wear a suit jacket anymore or a dress if you're. I don't know if it's any more or if it's just that there are more middle well, of the plenty. road restaurants and not as many high end. Well, there are plenty of high end restaurants that have stopped doing it, though. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Mm. And, but yeah, it's, yeah. I don't if, understand like the, the dress code people, to eat at a restaurant. The dre- yeah, dress code to eat. To pay, mon- pay them money? Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're paying you. It's like school. We're paying you and you're still forcing me to wear what. Yeah. Whatever. Um, but I know a lot of people will like also try to make themselves feel more fancy because they're going to a nice restaurant. Oh, yeah. So Some they people dress like up. to dress up and do all that stuff. I am not one of those people. Mm-mm. I never have been. Um, I maybe did it a little bit more when I was younger. Um, I think, but I just, I still was always like, I'd prefer I to think wear social jeans, media you know? has made that worse. Cause I feel like there's so many, Oh, interesting. Like pretenders on social media. Oh my gosh. Okay. So there's this, <laughs> <laughs> I triggered something. There, there is this whole, like. I find TikTok fascinating because I follow a bunch of comedians on there. Um, and so that's always fun. Right. Yeah. Um, but when you open up the app, it's on the for you page. Right. So it just like shows you stuff it shows um, you stuff. that, you know, is not the people you're following or whatever. And so I'll occasionally see like things that I'm not, you know, and the thing that amazes me is some of these like get ready with me things. Have you seen those where they're like talking about something while they're like doing their makeup and stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's all sorts of things where people will put random stuff in the background while they're talking about something or reading something or something like that. Well, the the makeup tutorial ones crack me up because like some of them I actually like what they're talking about. And so the fact that they're putting on makeup, I don't really care. I'm just yeah, like, I feel like that's how a lot of them are. A lot of them are just filler. Videos. Yeah. It's it's like to keep your interest, I guess. But uh, somebody made a comment on one of the videos and said something about like Meredith Duxbury or some, some name like that. And I was like, okay. Like they were like making these like mocking comments. And I was like, what is this? This woman, like, pours like practically half a bottle of foundation in her hands and then just slathers it all over her face. It is so much makeup. Like I just, I can't like, anyway, yeah, I can't do it. But the other thing that that gets me about those things is, um, contouring, which I have, I go back and forth on this because I don't have a problem with people wearing makeup, but contouring feels like lying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, my nose is not as big as, you know, like I'm going to make my nose not look as big as it is, mm-hmm. you know, or like, I don't know. It's just, I don't it, know why I just thought of, um, Ron Swanson's skin, oh, skin mi- milk, skin milk is it, water that's it, lying it, about being milk. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I, I have to, I have to be careful there because I, I don't, I, there's so many different ways you could look at like plastic surgery and makeup and hair dye and like, you know, all kinds of things. But like, I mean, it's it's not like contouring is a new thing, but I remember when I first started seeing people doing like videos on it, I was like, this feels deceptive. (laughs) But anyway, yeah. So I don't know. It's just, I've, I, I very rarely wear makeup and I just like, like I'm not wearing any now. And after we're done, I'm going to go out with a friend of mine and I'm not going to change anything about, like I literally just got out of the shower and put some moisturizer on my face and that is how I will go out. And I'm almost 48. <laughs> like, like I'm just, I just walk outside. Well, I mean, it's easier for dudes. For dudes. For dudes. You're not really I mean, Shelby not expected does too. to wear makeup, you know? Well, yeah, she does too. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and maybe that'll be more of a revolution. Maybe someday I will come back in vogue because it'll be like, oh, completely natural and no makeup is the trend. And I'll be like, woo! <laughs> yeah, only problem with that is that there is nothing that will sponsor that trend sure so yeah. that trend will die yeah. fast because well what it'll, trends always come from companies well what it will be almost always what it will be is selling makeup that looks makes it look like you're not wearing makeup oh gosh <laughs> just kill me now <laughs> it'll be so you but better 
I feel like it'll, it'll be obvious. Either that or it'll just be Halloween makeup. Um, I think there are ways that people, I've actually seen people do like natural, quote unquote, natural makeup. And it basically just almost looks like an airbrushed version of them. You know what I mean? But that still looks fake. Um, I think it depends on the person. There, there are a lot of people where I'm like, I just look at them and I'm like, I can see all of your makeup. Like, it, and I don't know that they care. And I don't know. It's just a strange, it's just, a, it's such a weird thing to me. I've never quite understood all the effort people do in the morning to get ready because <laughs> I am too lazy to do it. I, I get... know I'll, I'll watch like a show or something where it's kind of like following a, uh, a woman character or something getting up in the morning. And mm -hmm. it's just like, it's like whatever the intro to the show is. And they're just like following her as the credits are coming over the screen or something. Yeah. And it's like, just, and, and so they're, like, they're like cutting it. They're like cutting it too, yeah, so yeah. it's not like taking forever. But it's like so many steps. Yeah, and I'm like, what are you doing? You're like, I just, I don't have the patience like, you, for it. I'm like, I, I'm too hungry in the morning. I just go and eat breakfast. Well, and amen, I'm brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how can I get ready as quick as possible so I can get downstairs and eat some food? But yeah, I, it's, I've, I've watched the you know get ready with me things i've heard about people's different routines and i just i don't i feel like i have way better things i'd prefer to do with my time yeah you know um so and i don't know maybe if i had a more public facing job maybe i would feel differently well but. i think that's always the difference and i feel really bad for social i think some people on social media have dug themselves a hole cuz i think some people on social media started out their social media career with just pretending to be someone else just for the sake of pretending to be someone else. I think for some people mm. it might even be like just a depression thing or an escape thing. Mm -hmm. And so they do that, which I think starts a lot in school. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think some dig a hole because then that's all they feel like they can do on social media and then they don't feel like they can post anything about like their real life on social media. Well, part of the problem is that we don't want to see it. I mean, I mean, as a culture, like we, it's we, not as popular. we generally like to see polished things and we don't like Our it. Our polished brains like polished things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My brain is so smooth. Um, mm. <laughs> I, I mean, really we don't, uh, it's, it's kind of like the, um, they, they used to call it the Facebook effect. Have you heard of that? No. And it was like, you know, your life is this good, but because you're, uh, nobody can tell me where see where I'm holding my hand, but you're, <laughs> you're <laughs> at this level. Yes. Your, your life is at a, a, a six, let's say out of 10. Right. But then your friends post only the eight, nine, and 10 moments oh, of their lives. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And so then you think my life sucks and everybody else's life is wonderful. And, but yeah. it's just because they're posting the positive Yeah, they're only things. posting the positives. Which honestly yeah. is for once a good thing. So I feel like nine times out of ten, a lot of people post... Or, or a lot of people talk about only the negative things in their lives. That's true. But when it comes to social media, yeah. it's actually surprisingly the opposite. Unless something really bad happens. And then people are like, oh, my God, guys, listen to this. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, but and yeah. that's where Am I the Asshole has come from. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I so I think, you know, not just like social media influencers, but we all, if we're active on social media in any way, kind of put on a persona when we're on there. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe not all all the time, but it definitely at first it was that way for Facebook for sure. I'm trying to think because you know I've done podcasts, YouTube, streaming. I don't feel like I'm very different. I think the only thing is I usually force myself to talk more, mm. which is automatically a personality difference. But that's because that's like literally the job, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think somewhat as well, I think there's just some things for me where it's, it's like, I try to make my voice sound more clear and I try to like stay on topic and that's just not necessarily me as a person because I have ADHD. Mm. So, uh, yeah, there, there are definitely times I've had to edit in my 
video game podcast entire segments out because I'm like trying to keep myself on task. And so I keep like blanking out for five minutes mm. and then getting back onto the, <laughs> right. onto the topic yeah. at hand. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because what you're bringing up is actually uh, something uh, why I struggle with the idea of a, like a personal brand. Like, yeah, even if you're not like a social media influencer, there are all these people that recommend you have a personal brand for your career life because like, it's not enough to just be, it feels like it's not enough to just be good at your job anymore. You also have to have a a platform. Um, well, not even you have to, you have to seem like a desirable person. Like, yeah. Oh man, I've been reading so much bad advice. I, I got, when I was unemployed, I reacted with a lot of posts on LinkedIn about job seeking. And so now that's like my whole feed <laughs> because <laughs> it, like it was so long that I was doing that. So I still interact. I and, told LinkedIn to stop giving me notifications and it's still giving me notifications. Well, go track it down and beat it up. But yeah, it's, there's so much advice on there where People are like, you need to do all this networking and you should be putting out thought leadership articles and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that's so exhausting. Like if that's not your job, if it's like not an inherent part of your job, it shouldn't have to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. I feel like so many jobs. Cause I mean, obviously you'd want to do a background check where you look up like to make sure someone hasn't been posting weird crap on social media before you hire them. Right. Or, um, Actually, it is. It really is mostly social media at this point. I don't understand how people will put their in, entire lives and opinions and everything on social media, knowing that uh, somebody can look it up. <laughs> yeah, it's like you do realize you're telling everyone this, right? Right. Like, yeah. Do you know how many like high life careers have plummeted within two days because someone posted the wrong thing on social oh, media? Oh my god! Uh, there was there was one where. A woman um, wrote something on social media. She was, uh, I think she was traveling to Africa and she wrote a tweet before getting on the plane and then shut off her phone and it blew up. And while she was in the plane, on the plane, I think like her company announced that they were going to fire her and like, like it was just, you know, and then there, there was like a hashtag, like when will Justine land or something like that? Like people were waiting for her to land and see like the shit storm that her yeah it was, oh my god yeah yeah and and i think she actually a few years later did like an interview about like the lessons i learned from you know social media kind of thing um but when it was in its early stages not everybody was thinking about that kind of stuff right and yeah. so there's all kinds of stuff people can dig up and I'm just like, I don't think I've ever said anything terrible. I probably may have posted something embarrassing, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, okay, should I go back through and check everything? Cause also my views have changed over the years. Yeah. And so it's very possible. I said something offensive. Yeah. You know? I don't think it's fair to find old stuff. Yeah. And fire. I don't think so either. I think it has to be recent stuff. Exactly. I hear when people are like, Oh, I dug up a tweet from 2010 where he said, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, that was 2010. Does he think differently? Differently now, like, yeah. Like, what if he was taught his lesson? Right. And yeah. Like, changes. people change, and that and that's the thing I hate about those reactions is that like it gives people no incentive to change if you're yeah. if you're just gonna get. That's why I know. have really mixed feelings about cancel culture. Oh yeah, me too. Is because like too. I totally think that if someone did something horrible, their career should be in the gutter. Right. For yeah. at least for certain things. Right. Yeah. I mean, if they're not i don't see why someone should get fired from working in like a factory because they're like i understand they're racist but it feels weird when they're not in public at all and they're working at a factory to be fired from the factory oh, i don't know how i feel about that one i'd have to think about it i don't know how i feel about that one either yeah. honestly now that i'm like talking now about that you're it. saying it because it's like it's not a public facing we position to, we just didn't used to know yeah you know like people wouldn't the other side of this is that people wouldn't post that stuff that, well, first of all, there was for a while, there was nowhere to post that stuff. But then like for a while, we all had a, a collective knowledge, like that you just don't advertise that you're a racist. <laughs> 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 like, 
<laughs> like this is like not a smart thing to do. And we're, um, we're talking about why we don't understand why people pretend to be other people, but we do understand why racists pretend to be other people oh, on yeah, social media. For sure. Yeah. Um, which continue to, or just change your views, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so, the more that you pretend to be a, a non-racist, the more likely you'll end up becoming a non-racist. Fake it till you make it? Fake it till you make it. I actually wonder in some ways if that would work. I think psychologically it does hmm. to a certain extent. Maybe not like completely flip your views. Right. But I think to a certain extent you just like stop becoming as. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a lot of stuff like that where fake it till you make it's actually a like proven study. Oh, yeah. I. I've done, I've done that. I've yeah. done like, I really don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. And then I, I'm like, okay, you know what? I don't mind this anymore. I did like, that with you podcasting. Know. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I don't know if fake it till you make it is the right thing. It was, it was just a hobby. But see, podcasting is actually a really good example because as far as I know, we started doing this cause we thought it would be fun and we're like, and if anybody listens, yay. Um, unless you were like, I'm planning on us having a multimedia conglomerate from this podcast. Mm. Is that what you're thinking? Obviously. Okay. Um, <laughs> and you know, and I, just, I enjoy doing this and it's fun. And to a certain extent, I'm like, that's cool. That's good. Let's just, you know, be fine with that. But then there are other times when I'm like, you know, um, I faced age discrimination when I was looking for a job. And if I'm on the job market again, I'm probably going to have an even more difficult time just yeah. the older and older I get. And so is there something I could parlay into a money making thing? And then I start to think about the podcast and then I'm like, okay, well, what if we did this? And what if we did that? And then I'm just like, uh, but that's not who we are. And that's like, that's the struggle. Cause there are certain things, if you're lucky, just being you is like people like it and they follow you and that's great. But in a lot of circumstances, people chase the, the content, you know, like, mm -hmm. like what is the, what is the trending thing and how do I have to change in order to keep people engaged? And that just sounds exhausting to me. It's like, I don't even want to do my hair or makeup in the morning. <laughs> Like, what is... <laughs> yeah, that's why, that's at least for these podcasts, I would like to just talk about what's interesting to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if other people follow suit with that, then cool. Because, like, I never really tried to make... Because for a while I did my YouTube channel and my stream, and mm -hmm. it was mostly my stream because editing videos sucks. But where I just hunted achievements mm -hmm. in video games. And that's like a very small, not very small, but it is, it's a fairly small population of, yeah, it's of, yeah. of gamers, not like the majority of gamers because a lot of like, uh, achievement tutorials or something are, are, do get a lot of viewers because it's the achievement tutorial. So if someone just like, even who isn't an achievement hunter just wants to look up how to get it, Right. Yeah. Then a view pops up, but streaming it where you have to actively get people interested in whatever game it is you're playing. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you're achieving. So, but I've never tried to like be like, oh, what's the, what's the new game right now? So that way I can like play that game. Right. Especially since a lot of the new, like, especially around that time, a lot of the new popular games were like Fortnite and Warzone, which are, which I, at least Fortnite at the time was a terrible game. I think it's gotten a lot better and also a lot worse at the same time. Whole another thing. Anyways, and Warzone came out, which which I also thought was absolutely terrible. So it was just like no way I was even going to play those yeah. those games. But those yeah. were the like the popular things. Mm. But I would just I would never try and like sacrifice what I actually want to do just to get yeah viewers and you know it's funny because i look back on you know it's i unfortunately play the what if game way too often and then i end up feeling regretful about stuff it's a good comic series 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I actually think about like parallel universes where I made this decision and so it created a different that reality. That just creates unneeded levels of stress about something you can't change. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well aware. But like I part of my, pro, my part of my problem is that I left I started in a certain career path and then I left that career path to go to grad school and that just interrupted the whole thing. Yeah. You know. And then I tried like kind of a slightly different career but I was kind of like meh about it. And then I was like, well, and then we needed money. Like I would just, yeah. Anyway. Um, so I was like, well, I can go back to doing what I did before. Cause I have experience. I can probably find a job. And then that happened. Right. Like, so, but you know, I was looking at that, the people that I was working with around my, like my early years in nonprofit work, Mm-hmm. You know, there were people who were at positions lower than mine and stuff like that, that they're now in these like either uh, senior management or director levels in larger organizations or they're executive directors of their own small organizations or whatever. And I was moving into uh, like a management position. You know what I mean? Like it was just like they've gotten so far and... uh And I didn't because I didn't like properly play the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I guess that's kind of a different thing than extroverted world. It definitely is an extroverted world. And that's part of the problem. Um, in my opinion anyway. Uh, and, and part of that is a different thing. I mean, I took, I, I switched careers midlife. Like, so that was, well, hopefully not midlife. Cause I mean, I would die soon, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I switched careers and that causes like, you have to start over and you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I've also just observed people and how they've built things over the years and I watch what they have to do to do it. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like just the yeah. the networking and the and the glad handing and it's just all so exhausting. Yeah. That's why I've definitely taken to heart the just like step out of time type type thing mm. where I might be behind other people that are able to take so many steps at once. Mm. But as long as I keep taking the steps, I'll I'll still reach the same point. Hopefully, yeah. there's always a chance that you don't, but yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I'll still reach the same point. It just might take me longer, and that's fine with me. I mean, I got a lot of years left. Like, dear God, I hope so. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> and I, it it's fine with me if I'm spending it on something that I like doing, even though I'm not making a lot of money off of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people aren't very comfortable with the idea of like working a part time to full time job that they don't like fully like to do something that they really like to do or that they feel like their only option is to do the the job they don't really like to do because they can't right now do the job they really want to do. Yeah. And I kind of understand that because it's easy to kind of just give up on on the idea of what of what you really want to do because it's it feels out of reach but you really just gotta keep trying to make hey fake it till you make it right (laughs) keep trying to make progress because if you try to do it all at once then it always leads to burnout yeah and that's um that's something i keep trying to keep in mind i've been wanting to write a book for two decades you know And it's just always like, oh, I always feel like it's been too long and I just need to be able to like write it quickly. Right. Whereas if I would have written a book 15 minutes a day, if I would have taken 15 minutes a day over the last 20 years, I could have written multiple books. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's it's a weird thing where you feel like, you know, you have to have a big chunk of time to give to something or you have to, you know, or you want it to happen right away. You know and, who you know. has made a career out of faking it till you make it? No. All actors. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It is. Um, They're all faking. <laughs> 
I think that's that's definitely the other the other side of that is uh, acting, role playing for D and D for us, mm-hmm. or uh, playing a video game. Even sometimes watching stuff or reading a book, I feel like it's harder to put yourself in someone else's shoes mm-hmm. when you're reading a book or watching a movie or something. Mm-hmm. I obviously, if you're role playing, then you you are the person's shoes. So you are the person. Yeah, you shoes? are the shoes. <laughs> Wow, that's some intense role playing. So as opposed to like, yeah, all the different things about uh, faking who you are for either good or bad purposes in life. You're, faking it you're, for entertainment. Yeah, you're talking about like for entertainment. I have to admit that I've been, I've had trouble with the role playing for D&D. Um, and it's weird because I used to do theater you know, I used to do all this stuff. And then when theater wasn't like when I wasn't in school anymore. And so theater wasn't like just super easy, right, right there. I mean, I suppose I could have done community theater, but, um, I did like skits at my church. Like I did, I wrote, I wrote them, I performed in them, I, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and when skits were more of like a thing and then we did videos and then like, you know what I mean? Like I, I did that for a long time, but I think I honestly think that part of the reason I have trouble with it is because I'm still so new to the game. There's still so much I don't understand that it's hard for me to stay in character. Yeah, you because there's a lot more things you got to pay attention to. Yeah, and I think Dad's on the other on the like is flipped on that because I think oh my god he's totally in character. I think he focuses so much on being in character and stuff. And he'll be like, okay, what do I do? Like, yeah. Like, he'll <laughs> yeah. look down at his character That's sheet true. and be like, what do I do? That's true. Well, and uh, that, I love that. But yeah. And I think to a certain extent too, I mean, you know, you, you helped me like, Oh, like work on your backstory and what's all the, you know what I mean? The backstory is the key. Um, and I, I honestly forget it. The whole, for, forget my backstory the whole time. That's why I tell you to, you should reread it before. But I'm so like, cause I don't know. It's really interesting. So we had that moment two t- sessions ago where your dad in character was being very argumentative mm-hmm. about whether or not we should go. I guess it was three sessions ago. Uh, it was, he was, no, it was two sessions ago, but he was talking about something we did in the previous session where he was like, gotcha. you just went along with this and why didn't we discuss this more? Why didn't we question it? And, um, and, and he was saying this in character, right? And so then yeah. there was like a character discussion that was, you know, like people in character arguing for different things. Right. And I, later on, your dad was like, I think people were just like, Oh, this is how the game's supposed to go. And so we just do this. And mm-hmm. I was like thinking about it and I was like, that is absolutely what I did. I was like, Oh, this must be, this, this must, must be, be the, the main thing. quest. Yeah. This must be the thing we're supposed to do. And so we should do it. Yeah. And that's a game thought to me, not a character thought. Yeah. I think, I think it's hard for a lot of people to, to be like, it's Okay. I was going to say to trust the dungeon master. I think a lot of people trust, trust me, mm-hmm. but people don't think about it that I will correct the game if you don't follow. See, I don't, I what don't think the, about that. What is the quote unquote main, main quest? Yeah. I'm afraid we're going to miss it and mess it up. And you've told me this multiple times. You're like, if you miss something that I will just have like a storm come and make you force you into this or like you hit a wall. Like, I don't, you know, I won't railroad you that much, but, but yes, <laughs> you're like, basically I will force you into the situation, you know, or I'll just change this. I'll just adapt the situation too. Oh, okay. cause I mean, there's, there's always events at, at play that are happening whether you're there or not. So That's it's fair. It's always a choice of which event you're at. If you're just off doing your own thing, then the world's going to continue going. Yeah. And uh, so I feel like even for the most part, unless something's really important, I won't just throw stuff in front of you because you guys aren't going the way you were supposed to go. Okay. I'll just let you guys go that way and be like, I wonder what they're, what they're going to hit. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's been the first few sessions for me. That's what's been difficult because my what I'm doing instead, because coming from board games um is i'm looking for 
I'm analyzing and I'm yeah. looking for the thing that we're supposed to do to win the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, yeah. I, I think some of you got what you would assume to be like the main, like the end goal of the game. Mm. And, but I love it because I'm especially loving Tempor because I think a lot of people have, have an idea have a very similar idea of what the end goal for the game is and Tempor's idea for what the end game is, is completely different than everyone else's Oh, interesting! because of their role playing, which I love. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. And I hope they keep that up because I, I think it's brilliant and I love them for it. So I need to, I need to talk with you sometime out of game about like, because I'm so unfamiliar with the game, I'm like, okay, so how much of my personal backstory plays into the decisions I make and the statements I make? And, and then I realized this last time, I'm like, I haven't really, I haven't really set forth much of a personality outside of the fact that I will sing my own praises and my songs and ignore what everybody else did and then take their, and take that you're a little for, clumsy and then I'm a little clumsy. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that can be your personality. You just got to role play it more in the session instead yeah. of writing the songs between sessions. Because for anyone who doesn't know, our bard here, <laughs> Incendia Cantore, yes. uh, she <laughs> Incendia. will uh, write uh, songs between the sessions about the about the previous session and use it as instead of because I usually do the recap right before our D&D sessions. But instead, what we've been doing for for this uh, this dungeon group, this uh, or this campaign, which I've absolutely loved, is that she does these songs that is basically the recap. But she takes all of the credit yes. for everything good that happens <laughs> and doesn't mention any mistakes that she made. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, yeah. or or blames people if they did do something wrong. Right. Like it's it's and I love it so much yeah if anything was accomplished in the previous session i did it all um which has been fun that's been fun but it's also my job as as a dm to present opportunities for people to uh give character growth and mm. stuff like that mm. and i totally did not mean to but i just lobbed it for for hulk Oh yeah. In the in the last campaign. Oh. Or in the last session. Because Tempor, y you guys all escaped this windmill that was that had a coven of night hags. Night in hags. It. And your resident evil warlock realized what these were and right. was like getting everyone to come out because well, These no, he were didn't want to leave eat. because of the tasty psychedelic pastries. But they, they still left. He was still the, <laughs> the first one out. That's true. That's true. And but Tempor got stuck inside. Yes. Because he would he, not leave his glaive yes, behind. He, he, rolled a, <laughs> he rolled a nat one. So uh, when attacking someone. <laughs> so I, I made it so that way he got his glaive stuck in the banister of the staircase and then one of the night hacks just like closed the door and everyone was outside except, yeah, except for, for tempor inside yeah and so everyone just saw tempor just disappear behind the door yeah. and uh hulk who is this scared of everything goblin this this was one of my favorite moments during that session was just like Fuck it. Yeah. And, and, I'm going to get him. Uh, yeah. And he he literally casted heroism on himself, which yeah. is hilarious to yes. me. Yes. Yes. And charged in past the night hags and grabbed Tempor and pulled him out with his glaive successfully. Yes. And that was I totally accidentally set that up for for Hulk. Yeah. And it was the most perfect thing. Well, and it was the one of the best character developments of the campaign so it far. It was. It was awesome. The the and the fight was actually another indication of me not understanding the game. I need to just watch like a video about it or something. But um because I have the worst armor of anybody. I just have <laughs> I just have leather armor. And it cracks me up because every time 
<laughs> somebody we roll something to hit and you're, you're like is that a hit and i'm like yes and everybody's like yes because <laughs> it's so low it's so bad and so i'm just sitting there uh and i'm just like plugging away trying to hit these hags and of course i'm missing like every freaking time i had the worst dice throws um and then finally you know a little uh, bit of information maybe you guys are all level four right uh yeah and a night hags challenge rating is five. Oh, which means that that creature alone one night hag can defeat an entire party of level five characters oh Okay, so that must have been what Abris was talking about. Yeah. Okay. And so there were three of them. <laughs> <laughs> See, now I had no, I was just like, oh, this is the part of the game where we fight. So I'm going to keep fighting. <laughs> and everyone else was leaving. Everybody else was leaving. And your dad was like, why don't you leave? And I was like, I can do that. <laughs> it, it was not only that, but but he was he was like tempora staying behind to keep you alive right now <laughs> well that was what made me finally go oh yeah and then leave but yeah. then tempor was gonna take one last swing yeah. and then leave and then got their glaive stuck and was right. like i'm not leaving my glaive and yeah. then everything yeah. else happened yeah but i just like it was so funny because the whole table was basically like why aren't you leaving and i was like i didn't know that was an option like i just thought i had to stand here and fight <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely something where you can flee, uh -huh. you can f stick your ground and fight. Even if you know your character is going to die, you can still stand your ground and fight if you, if you really want to. I think one of the cheesiest answers, but still one of the most true answers for D&D &D when people ask like what D&D &D is about is that you can just do literally anything. I, I, and my brain will just not accept that. Because I every time I'm analyzing a situation and thinking about what I can do, I'm like, am I allowed to do that? Can I do that? Can I, do, you know? And I don't know why. Like, you keep telling me this. You keep telling me like you can do whatever, you know. <laughs> but I also don't know all the things I can do. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Like, I didn't realize for I think a while you'll, that you'll break I could, away from it. Well, I had more weapons on hand than I thought I did. Like, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just don't understand how th that's why I was thinking, like, maybe just watching like a little tutorial on like how to understand your game sheet or something, because I feel like you will tell me certain things you think I need to know, but you might because you know it too well, you're not going to yeah. be in the mindset of like, oh, I need to do this like a really basic tu tu tutorial, you know? Yeah. So anyway, it's. It's interesting because I feel like for D&D &D and video games, for some reason, for a while, it was a big thing that, like, if you are role-playing as these characters, especially the dungeon master role-playing as these evil characters, that mm -hmm. your, like, children are going to turn evil. Or if they play video games where they shoot at people, then all of a sudden your kid's going to go shoot guns and stuff at people, and it's... You know what I find funny about that argument? What? If that was true, we would have a way worse gun problem than, um, and oh, school shooting sure. problem than we do now. Yeah, because everyone plays yeah, Call of Duty in high like school. There's like, like, two, like a handful of people playing these games across the country. Like there would just be nothing left. We would it would be Armageddon. Yeah. 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 I don't. Especially that's the same argument with like uh, a lot of people's arguments with like racism or uh, like homophobia or transphobia or something like that is that they're evil and stuff. And it's like, do you realize how many people there are that are one black and also like part of the LGBT community? And it's like if if all of your opinions and thoughts and stereotypeness was true. Oh, I see. Every... You're saying that they say that like trans people are bad yeah. or whatever. Okay. I was not understanding what you were. Yeah. Because yeah. it was like, like one recent shooting was made by, I believe it was made by a trans person. Oh yeah, there was. Yeah. Yeah. And then people were like, see, and it's yeah. like, but did you like, under, do you understand how many trans people there are in the world? I mean, 
A, and also B, okay, this person was trans. How about all the straight white dudes that did all the other shootings? Yeah, like, exactly. To them, you're not. Oh God, it's. But uh, yeah. It's but yeah, the whole stupid. the whole fake it till you make it. Like people aren't doing that for D and D or for video games. Like they aren't. You might get. You might put yourself in the person's shoes, but it's all fantasy, and you know it's fantasy. I can't, I can't fake my way to being a fire Ganassi? No, you can't. <sighs> um, <laughs> and people are trying to fake it till they make it for a job. It's because they actually want to be that. Right. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. So if you if you want to be a spellcaster, an evil warlock spellcaster, then, then yes. I guess you can try to fake it till you make it in D&D. But. Well, I'm, I was thinking you meant real life. Oh. I mean, that could be your new career choice, ladies and gentlemen. Evil spellcaster warlock. Yeah, just fake it till you make it. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that covered a lot on... Pretending to be things you're not. Yes. Yes, including having a small nose. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't let that go. <laughs> that was rude. Yeah. Well, honestly, like, if anybody would want to use contouring to have a smaller nose, it's me. <laughs> so, like, I'm like, but I'm like, nah, it's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> My bulbous nose will have to do. Anyway, uh, yeah, so what you see is what you get. Uh, fine with me. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well. Well. That was probably really loud in the recording. 